Welcome to Autonomy Help Part 3A, entitled Getting Started, How to Simulate an Existing Vehicle in the GUI. I'll begin by clicking on the desktop icon of Autonomy. Flash screen of Autonomy opens. If you run Autonomy for the first time, you'll be on the Settings menu. In the Settings menu, you'll see and be able to select the version of MATLAB. In this case, we're using R2009A. If it's the first time that you're running Autonomy, you want to click on the Register button and register this version of MATLAB. Depending on your user privileges, you may get the following message telling you that it was not able to set the current value because you don't have administrator access. You'll have to find someone with administrator access or a power user access to be able to register MATLAB. Just click OK. In this case, because I don't have administrator privileges or power user privileges, the GUI wasn't able to detect if MATLAB was registered, but it would still attempt to open MATLAB. As I can see below here, I have the MATLAB command window open. So MATLAB did open. The GUI was able to do it. So I'll just click on Yes and move on. I'll now open a vehicle by clicking on the Open button below. I'll switch to the menu, allowing me to open a vehicle, and I'll click on Open a Vehicle. The Open Vehicle dialog box now opened. I'll go and browse for the split midsize vehicle. I can just scroll down to the split midsize vehicle and select it. Or what I can do is I could type in the beginning text for it and filter based on split and find the vehicle quicker this way. I'll now select it. The GUI is now open. We could look at this window and examine the different parts to it. We have the Project Explorer over to the left showing us the loaded vehicle in a tree view. In the middle we have the Select an Item Explorer showing the different files that we can select for the systems in this vehicle. On the right we have the graphical view of the vehicle. You can see here we have a representation of the vehicle that is pretty accurate to the one that appears in Simulink. We have the driver, we have the vehicle propulsion controller, we have the vehicle powertrain architecture, and we have the environment. Depending on what I have selected in the graphical view, you'll see that the Select an Item Explorer will update. If I click on the driver, I'll have systems and files available for the driver. If I click on the environment, I'll have systems and files available for the environment. If I click on the VPA, you'll see here the list of pre-processing files that I have available for the vehicle propulsion architecture. If I want to load a second vehicle, I could click on the vehicle project in the Project Explorer and pull up a list of the vehicles. I can now load a vehicle by selecting it from the list here in the Select an Item Explorer and drag and drop it on the vehicle project. You can see the different vehicles available in the current library. We have conventional vehicles that begin with the CONV prefix. We have electric vehicles that begin with the ELEC prefix. We have fuel cell vehicles that begin with fuel cell. Parallel vehicles that begin with the word parallel. The different variations such as integrated starter generator, post-transmission where the motor appears after the transmission, pre-transmission where the motor appears before the transmission, a series engine vehicle, series hybrid that are fuel cell vehicles, and then the splits. I will now load one of the conventional automatic two-wheel drive vehicles. I'll go to conventional, mid-size, automatic, two-wheel drive default. Drag and drop that and load it in the Project Explorer by dragging it onto the Vehicle Project node. I now have two vehicles loaded in this project. Besides this graphical view, we can look at some of the other views. There's the list view. 
that shows the vehicle as a tree. And then there's a simplified view, which shows it as a flattened list. We'll talk about more of these views in later trainings. I can now go to setup process and drag and drop processes onto each one of these vehicles to set them up and prepare them from simulation. In this case, we'll just focus on the predefined cycles. Under predefined cycles and certification, you'll find the standard certification cycles that are used throughout the world. In the US, we'll choose the city cycle, the UDDS cycle, and drag and drop it onto the split. And you'll see that it's adding it to this vehicle. You also see that it showed up in the simulation queue over here on the right. I can then select the other vehicle and do the same thing. I can select a city cycle and drag and drop it onto this branch of the tree for the conventional, or I could drag and drop it into its simulation queue. I'll just drag and drop it into its simulation queue. Those are the two different ways that a process can be added to a vehicle. Either drag and drop it onto the vehicle node, or drag and drop it into the simulation queue once that vehicle node has been selected. You'll see over here on the right the different steps that are highlighted that can be modified. These are steps within the process. Each process is composed of sub-steps. Some of these sub-steps in this case are initialize the cycle. This, this sets up the cycle. In this case, it'll set up a UDDS cycle. There's also initialize Simulink solver options. Initializing the Simulink solver options allow you to choose the differential equation solver. In this case, we use ODE4 by default or it allows you to change the simulation step time. And there are other steps here for system post-processing, saving the results, and saving a summary file that's lo loaded later on in the table. Some of these have editors, such as when I click on initialize the cycle, you'll see an editor for it, displaying the cycle that will run. We'll talk more about the processes in a later step, later on in, in the next part of the training. If you click on the review, because I have two vehicles loaded, you'll see both vehicles side by side. This review view is good to compare vehicles. So if I want to see the files that are being used to initialize the chassis, the model files and the initialization files, I could quickly go to this view and compare them side by side. If you have similar vehicles that are being run, this allows you to go and inspect the vehicles and see which ones you have running with which initialization files. In this case it's pretty clear I have a split and a conventional but I might be running two splits that have a slight difference in the chassis or a slight difference in the in engine initialization file and it'd be nice to go back and be able to compare these files. Now that the vehicles are loaded and have processes associated to them I could go to the execute link, click on it and now I'm ready to run a simulation. I can just go here and click on perform selected action and it will begin my simulation. It now begins executing the process and running those steps. First step that it's running is this model building step. It's creating the vehicle from the individual simulink models and assembling them based on the vehicle choices. We could see here that the vehicle model does represent what was shown in the graphical view in the GUI. We have a driver, a vehicle propulsion controller, an environment block, and we have the vehicle propulsion architecture below. We'll talk more about analyzing the results from the simulation in a later help video. I've just gone back to the GUI just to show one other feature. When running these simulations, we'll see that these simulations are tracked as run UDDS cycle 
and then run UDDS cycle 01. It's convenient to rename these and give them a more specific name, such as in this case maybe calling it split midsize UDDS. And in the other case, calling this conventional midsize UDDS. This will allow us to track the simulations better, both on loading when we're analyzing the results, and also just in terms of tracking the A run files that are generated when clicking on this perform selected action. These files will be given the specific name so that we could go back and actually get a better idea of what we simulated. That completes this help video.